His Excellency, the High Commissioner, Mr. Sandeep Arya, <coughs> distinguished, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. In April last year, I had the opportunity to visit my ancestral homeland in Mundra, Kutch. And I went to the grave of my great grandfather, Manjibai, and reflected what would have happened if he and other parents had not allowed my grandfather and many others of his time to undertake that voyage on those from the shores of Gujarat to Tanzania and other countries along the coast of East and Southern Africa. Would we be in the position that we are in today as individuals, as families, and as communities? Even after such a reflection, I know that there was no surprise that my great-grandfather allowed my grandfather to undertake this migration because he was, after all, a Gujarati. Gujaratis have always been a very enterprising community who have shown interest in international trade beyond their linguistic and national borders. We are often criticized as being obsessed with our businesses, working long and ungodly hours to the annoyance of our competition. So much so that I'm sure most in this audience will agree with me. When the British meet, they ask, how is the weather? And when Gujaratis meet, they start, dando ke uche, gama vai parsa. It is this enterprising sense that has allowed us to have an outsized impact in the countries we have migrated to and that we have adopted to and have called home. So much so that myself and many of my generation today relate to being Tanzanians first and Indians second. The contribution of the Indian diaspora to Tanzanians' development across all sub-ethnic and religious communities have been profound and in many ways very interlinked. I have, however, been asked today to highlight only the Koja Shia ethnicity community in Tanzania, and while the economic and political leadership of the Indian diaspora has been highlighted today, I will focus on the outreach of our community in my talk today. The East African experience of the Koja Shia ethnicity community is so profound that today, apart from the ingrained culture, I see the obvious telltale signs of this unique blend of East Africanized Koja culture in many centers globally, from Swahili being spoken widely in our community in Orlando, Florida, to the traditional Pilau and Mandazi being served in our other centers globally. Our history of migration to Tanzania can be traced to the 1850s when the first Koja with other Gujarati families started moving out from India to explore prospects in East Africa and Madagascar. The first mosque and community center is said to have been built in Zanzibar in 1881 by community stalwarts who had arrived from India like the late Devji Jamal, who incidentally is an ancestor of Professor Abdul Sharif Devji. An interesting feature of the architect, architecture of both the mosques of our community in Zanzibar is that while the Koja community brought with themselves quite a bit of the Indian culture, the centers are a blend of Indian and local Zanzibari architecture. Starting from Zanzibar and the other coastal towns, the community spread further into the mainland, establishing a community center wherever they went. This allowed very strong links by maintaining cultural practices and linkages through faith, language, and marriage within the members of the community. The struggle of having to succeed as an immigrant community brought about a sense of generosity, volunteerism, and co community cohesion that is known and admired the world over. An interesting part of history for another day is how the Indian diaspora of the Koja community of East Africa became a diaspora once again in the Western Hemisphere, with nearly all of our communities in the Western world having been established by the Kojas of East Africa. In fact, the World Federation of our community, which is based in the UK, is a product of the experience of our community in Tanzania and in East Africa. Today, the Koja community, like many of the other Indian diaspora in Tanzania and elsewhere, have through extensive community links and support, 
become one of the most successful communities from Africa. Become among the most successful communities from a per capita perspective when compared to other ethnic communities. Members of our community today are involved in all sectors of the Tanzanian economy, including agriculture, insurance, education, banking, transportation, manufacturing, tourism, and trade. While a social religious community is established to serve its members and their social and spiritual needs, we have always been cognizant of our responsibility While a social religious community is established to serve its members and their social and spiritual needs, we have always been cognizant of our responsibility towards our beautiful country of Tanzania and the end to the indigenous population, especially the downtrodden. It is because of this that our communities, both as private individuals and as part of the structured community, have set up infrastructure in areas of affordable health, affordable education, sanitation, welfare support, and economic empowerment schemes. To give an idea of some of these institutions and outreach activities, in affordable education, the Dar Sam Jamaat runs al Muntazir schools from toddlers to secondary and a special needs school for developmentally challenged children in Dar es Salaam. The Bilal Muslim Mission runs an affordable primary school for low-income families in Temeke, and there are similar schools in Zanzibar, Bukoba, and Arusha. A private institution by the name of WIPAS runs affordable schools from nursery to secondary in Kibaha, for low-income households, and Bilal Muslim Mission runs a higher education grant scheme for indigenous community towards higher education. In health, we run affordable public health centers in Arusha and two in Dar es Salaam, and these centers carry out regularly public health awareness campaigns. Interestingly, in certain villages, we actually have mobile health clinics where we have a doctor who drives a mobile clinic to villages and provides villages with access to health checkups and medicine. We are also among the largest communal blood donors towards the country's blood banks. With blood bank with blood donation drives to be carried out in most centers in Tanzania, including in villages where we serve. And among the largest initiatives that have been acknowledged at the national level are the eye camps, where thousands in villages across the country get free cataract procedures and prescri prescription glasses every few months. In villages, we promote sanitation and water projects like water wells to improve access to clean drinking water. And one of the largest global schemes that we run in the World Federation with our regional partners is what is known as the annual Ramadan relief, where in excess of US dollars, one million is collected from donors globally towards assistance of indigenous people in all countries where we operate. And a substantial amount of these funds are used in Tanzanian villages and low income villages. Our communities across the world have learned from our communities in East Africa how to maintain our culture and structures while being collaborative with other communities and being a force of good in the different countries where we have established ourselves. I believe these traits are not unique and come from the common heritage that we have all gathered here to celebrate. Our community, while being dispersed the world over, does not forget its roots. Even today, the largest recipient of develop developmental funds that we raise in our community globally goes towards our members in India, mainly in furthering the education of those Koja families in India who do not have enough resources to send their children for higher education. There is something very unique about the blood that flows through the veins of all of us in this room. We might not share the same faith or even the same mother dialect, but it is the love of the motherland that has brought us all together today and for generations to come.